Exultet iam Angelica turba celorum, exultem divina misteria, et protandi regis victoria, turba insone et salutaris. Gaudeat et tellus tantu Adornata fulgoribus, et manis populorum vocibus, ei gaulare sulte. Qua propter astantes vos propres carissimi, at amiram huius sancti luminis claritatem, Uname cum quesua Dei omnipotentis misericordiam invocate. Ut qui me non meis meritis intra levitarum numerum dignatus est agregare luminis suis claritatem infundens cere in cuius laudem in Dominus Hobbes Hum. Deum Patrem Omnipotentem, 
Filium Queus Unigenitum Dominum Nostrum Iesum Christum, Toto Cordi Sacmentis Affectu, Et Vocis Ministerio Personare, Qui pro nobis eterno patri, ad debitum solvit, et veteris miaculi calcionem, io cuore detersi. Eic sunt en infesta pascalia, in quibus verus ille agnus ociditur, Cuius sanguine postes fidelium consecrantur. Ec nox est, in qua primum patres nostros, filios Israel, eductos de Egipto, mare rubrum, sic o vestigio, transire pecisti. Ecigitur nox est, que pegatorum tenebras, columnae illuminatione purgavi. Ec nox est, que odie per universum mundum, in Christo credentes, Ad ici seculi et caligine peccatorum segregatos, Redigratie socia sanctitati. Ec nox est, in qua destructis vinculis mortis, Christus ab inferis, Victor ascendit. Nihil enim nobis nasci profuit, nisi redimi profuiset. O mira circa nos, tue pietatis dignatio. O inestimabilis dilexio caritatis, Ut servum regimeres, filium tradidisti. O certa e necessarium ad e peccatum, quod Christi morte delegium est. O felix culpa, que talem ac tantum, Meruit abere redemptorem. O vere beata nos, Que sola meruit cire tempus et ora, In qua Christus ab inferis resurrexi. Et nox est, De qua scriptum est, et nox sicut dies illuminabitur, et nox illuminatio mea in delicis meis. Cuius igitur sanctificatio noctis, fuga celera, Pulpas lavat, et redit innocentiam lapsis, et meis dis letitiam. Fugat onia, concordiam parat, et curvat imperia. In huius igitur noctis gratia, Suscite, Sancti Pater, lauris huius sacrificium vespertinum, quotidin ac cerei oblazione solenni, pe ministror manus de operibus acum, sacro santa regit ecclesia. 
Sed iam columnei hus preconia novimus, quam in honorem Dei, rutilans in his accendi. Qui licet sidificus in partes, mutuate tutamen luminis, detrimenta non nobis. Alitur en in liquandibus ceris, quas in substantiam preziose huius lampadis, apis mater eduxis. O Pater Beata Nox, in Pater Enis Celestia, Hermanis Divina Iunguntu. Oramus Ergo Te Domine, Ut Cereus Iste, in honorem tui nominis consecratus, at noctis huis caliginem destruendam, in deficiens perseveret. Et in odorum suavitatis acetus, supernis luminaribus misceatur, flamas eius, Lucifer matutinus inveniat. Ille in quam Lucifer finescit ocasum, Christus filius tus, qui regressus ad interis, humano generis serenus iluxit. Et vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, the darkness he called night, and there was evening and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament which separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. 
God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, planting plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning a third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning a fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the cattle according to their kinds and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. The word of the Lord.
Oremus. Omnipotens sempiterne Deus, qui es in omnium operum tuorum, dispensationi mirabilis, intelligent redempti tui, non fuise excellentius, quod initio factus est mundus, quam quod in fine seculorum, pasca nostrum immolatus est Christus, qui vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. A reading from the book of Genesis. God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the ass. I, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth, earth bless themselves because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord.
Oremus. Deus Pater Sume Fidelium, qui promissionis Tue filios diffusa, adoptionis gratia in toto terrarum orbe multiplicas, et perpes pascale sacramentum, Abraham puerum tuum universarum, sicut iurasti gentium efficis patrem, da populis tuis dinie, ad gratiam tuae vocationis intrare, per Christum Dominum nostrum. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go on dry ground through the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and the night passed without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and of cloud, looked down upon the host of the Egyptians and discomforted the host of the Egyptians, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its wonted flow where the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled into it. And the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not so much as one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord.
Oremus. Deus, cuyo sancti qua miracula et siam nostris temporibus coruscare sentimus, dum quod uni populo a persecutione faraonis liberando dextere tue potentia contulisti, id in salutem gentium, per aquam regenerationis operaris, presta ut in Abrahe filios et in Israeli ticam dignitatem tortius munde transeat plenitudo. Per Christum Dominum nostrum. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your, your labor for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that you know not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return not thither, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Omnipotens sempiterne Deus, spes unica mundi, 
qui profetarum tuorum preconia presentium, temporum declarasti misteria. Age populi tui vota placatus, qui ha in nullo fidelium, nisi ex tua inspirazione, proveniunt quarum libet incrementa virtutum. Per Christum Dominum nostrum.
Deus, qui hanc sacratissimam noctem, gloriae dominice resurrectionis illustras, excita in ecclesia tua adoptionis spiritum, ut corpore et mente renovati, purum tibi exhibiamus servitute, per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him for we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Dominus Fabiscum. Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Verbum Domini. One of the most remarkable things about tonight's gospel account of the resurrection is just how unremarkable it seems. The Christmas story has hosts of angels singing glory to God in the highest. The epiphany has mysterious wise men from the east following a star and receiving messages in a dream. The Lord goes up into the sky to the amazement of his apostles at his ascension. And even this past week, we have entered into the familiar drama of the events of his passion. Hosanna's one minute, crucify him the next. At his death, there was darkness over the whole land. The veil of the temple was torn in two. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, to tombs opened, and the bodies of holy men rose from the dead. And then, a rolled back stone, an empty tomb. He has risen, he is not here. Not that tonight lacks drama, blessing a fire, carrying a candle into a darkened church that slowly lights up as flame is passed from person to person. That is the drama of liturgy. The deacon sang, rejoice, let mother church rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. We've read how God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. 
We have read how God spoke with Abraham and tested his faith. We have read how God led the Israelites out of slavery with mighty power and parted the Red Sea. All of salvation history has been traced. The drama of God preparing his people for the most important event there ever has been and ever will be and ever can be. And then a rolled back stone, an empty tomb. He has risen. He is not here. There are no blinding lights, no trumpeting hosts of angels. There is not even the drama of the transfiguration on Mount Tabor. A rolled back stone, an empty tomb, he has risen, he is not here. He is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him just as he told you. Whether Easter is celebrated in the grandest of basilicas or in the midst of the devastation of war, whether it is celebrated by those grieving the death of a loved one or by those joyfully received into God's family in baptism, what is celebrated remains the same simple fact shown by that empty tomb, that he is risen, he is not here. Go to Galilee and you will see him there. Because although we celebrate Easter here in church with splendid music and beautiful flowers with gold and silver and fine vestments, it is in our ordinary lives that we experience the resurrection, in our homes and families, in our places of work, in maternity wards and cancer clinics, not just tonight or tomorrow or the octave to come or even the 40 days of the Easter season, in the whole of our life and in our death also. The holy women are to tell the apostles to go to Galilee, go back to what is known and familiar, to the ordinary and the everyday. That is where they are told they will see the Lord. Those are the places where Christ's risen life intersects with and transforms our own lives. Those are the places where he promises we will find him. In suffering and death and loss, in the worst moments of human experience, in devastation and anxiety, and in joy and in celebration and in love, in all our attempts to follow the Lord and in all our failings too. And if we cannot find the Lord Jesus there, then we will not find him here tonight amongst all the alleluias. The rolled back stone, the empty tomb. It's not just an event in the past, like the hosts of angels or the wise men or the earthquake. It is our guarantee now that light is always stronger than dark, that death always gives way to life. Because Jesus is God, and God is life, and he is light. Even if we cannot see his light yet, we know it will come. Even if we are not yet at the happy ending, we know that there will be one. The stone was rolled back not to make Christ's resurrection possible. It wasn't rolled back so that Christ could get out of the tomb. It was so that you and I could see into it. We could see that the tomb was empty. And we can see that where he is, there is no death, there is no end, there is only life. The Gospel of Easter is not simply the conclusion of all the events of Holy Week. It's not God's answer to the tragedy that is the cross. It's not merely the culmination of the stories of salvation history. It is the epitome, the recapitulation of everything that God has done and spoken. The rolled back stone, the empty tomb, tells us that if we are united to Christ, if as St. Paul puts it in our epistle, we imitate Christ in his death, we may be tested, we may suffer, we may mourn, we may even die, but we will never be overcome because Christ Jesus can never be overcome. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. 
He is going before you. There you will see him, just as he told you. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us humbly invoke upon this font the grace of God the Almighty Father, that those who from it are born anew may be numbered among the children of adoption in Christ. Oh, 
omnipotens sempiter ne Deus, ad est omagne pietatis tue sacramentis, et ad recreandus novos populos, quos tibi fons baptismatis paturit, spiritum adaptionis emite, ut quod nostre humilitatis cerendum est ministerio, virtutis tue impleatur effectu, per Christum Dominum nostro. Deus, qui invisibili potentia, per sacramentorum signa mirabilem operaris effectum, et creaturam atque multis modis preparasti, ut baptismi gratiam demonstrare. Deus, cuius spiritus, Super aquas inter ipsa mundi premodia ferebatu, ut iam tunc virtutem sanctificandi aquarum natura concipere. Deus, qui regenerationis speciem, in ipsa diluvi effusione signasti, ut unius, Eius tem elementi misterio, et finis esit vitsis, et oerico virtutum. Deus qui Abrahe filius per mare rurum sico vestigio transire fecisti, ut plebs a Faraonis servitute liberata, populum baptizatorum prefigurare. Deus cuius filius, in aqua Jordanis a Ioane baptizatus, sancto spiritu est in junctus, et in cruce pendens, una cum sanguine aquam, de latere suo produxi. Ac post resurrectionem suam, Discipulis iusit, ite docete omnes gentes, baptit santos eos, in omine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. Respice in faciem ecclesiae tue, e ique dignare, fontem baptismatis aperire. Summa tec aqua unigeniti tui gratiam de Spiritu Sancto, ut homo ad imaginem tuam conditus, sacramento baptismatis, acunctis qualoribus petustatis ablutus, in novam infansiam, ex aqua et Spirito Sancto, Resurgere mere atu. Descendat quesimus Domine, in hanc plenitudinem fontis, per filium tuum, virtus spiritus sancti. Descendat quesimus Domine, in hanc plenitud, plenitudem fontis, per filium tuum, virtus spiritus sancti. Descendat quesimus Domine, in hanc plenitudinem fontis, per filium tuum, virtus spiritus sancti. 
Ut omnes cum Christo consepulti baptismum in mortem, ad vitum cum ipso resurgam, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
Sancti Fratres, ut meam ac vestrum sacrificium, acceptabile fiat ab Deum Patrem Omnipotentum. Si cipia Domi Sacrificium de Marvis, ad Lamus Gloria in Marvis, ad utitat in Corpo Nostro, Tersius Ecclesia Sirsa. So she bequesimus Domine preces populi tui, cum oblationibus hostiarum, ut pascalibus initiatum misteris, ad eternitatis nobis medelam, te operante proficiam, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Dominus Sum corda. Gratias agamus, Domino Deo nostro. Justum est e cum et salutare, te quidem Domine omni tempore confiteri, sed in hoc potissimum nocte gloriosius predicare, cum pasca nostrum immolatus est Christum. Ipse enim verus est anus, qui abstulit peccata mundi, qui mortem nostrum moriendo destruxit, et vitam resurgendo reparavit, qua propte profusis pascalibus gaudi, Totus in orbe terrarum mundus exulta. Sed et superne virtutes, atque angelice potestates, imnum gloriae tue concinut, sine fine dicente.
Richard or Clementissime Pater, per Jesum Christum filium tuum dominum nostrum, supplices rogamus ac petimus, urte accepta habeas et benedicas, hec dona, hec munera, hec sancta sacrificia illibata. In primis quae tibi offerimus pro ecclesia tua sancta catholica, quam pacificare, custodire, adonare, et regere dinieris toto orbi terrarum, una cum famolo tuo Papa Nostro Francisco, et antistite Nostro Bernardo, et omnibus orthodoxis, atque catholice, et apostolice fidei cultoribus. Memento, Domine, famelorum famelorumque tuarum. Et omnium circumstantium, quorum tibi fides cognita est et nota devotio, proquibus tibi afferimus, vel qui tibi offerent hoc sacrificium laudis, pro se suisque omnibus, pro redemptione animarum suarum, pro spe salutis et in columnitati sue, tibique redunt vota sua eterno Deo, vivo et vero. Comunicantes et noctem sacratissimum celebrantes, resurrectionis Domini nostri, Jesu Christi secundum carnem, sed et memoriam venerantes in primis gloriosis emper virginis Mariae, genetricis eustem Dei et Domini nostri, Jesu Christi. Sed et beati Iosef, iustem virgini sponsi, et beatorum apostolorum ac martyrum tuorum, Petri et Pauli Andrei, Iacobi Ioannis, Tomi Iacobi Filippi, Bartolomei, Matei, Simoni Settadei, Lini, Cleti, Clementi, Sisti, Corneli, Cipriani, Lorenzi, Crisogoni, Ioannis et Pauli, Cosme et Damiani, et omnium sanctorum tuorum. Quorum meritis precibusque concedas, ut in omnibus protectionis tuae moniamur auxilio. Per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Ancigitur oblationem servitutis nostre, sedet cuncte familiae tuae, quam tibi offerimus, pro is quoque quos regenerari dignatus es ex aqua et spiritu sancto, tribuens eis remissionem omnium peccatorum, quesimus Domine, ur placatas ac cipias, diesque nostros in tua pace disponas, atque ab eterna damnazione nos eripi, et in electorum tuorum iubias gregi numerali, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Quam oblationem tu Deus in omnibus quesimus, benedictam, adscriptam, ratam, rationabilem, acceptabilemque facere dinieris, ut nobis corpus et sanguis fiat dilectissimi filii tui, Domini nostri, Jesu Christi. Qui pridie quam pateretur, accepit panem in sancta sac venerabiles manus suas, et elevatis oculis in celum, a te Deum patrum suum omnipotentem, tibi gratias agens benedigsit, fregit, dedit que discipuli suis dicens, ac cipite et manducate ex hoc omnes. Hoc est enim corpus meum, quod pro vobis tradetur. Simili modo postquam cenatum est. Accipiens et hunc preclarum calicem, in sancta sac venerabiles manus suas. Item tibi gratias agens, benedigsit, dedique discipuli suis dicens. Accipite et bibite ex eo omnes. Hic est enim calix sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti qui pro vobis et pro multis effundetur in remissionem peccatorum, hoc facite in meam commemorationem.
mysterium fidei. et memores Domini, nos servitui, sed et plebs tua sancta, e justem Christi filii tui Domini nostri, tam beati passionis, nec non et ab inferis resurrectionis, sed et in celos gloriose ascensionis, offerimus preclari maestati tui, de tuis doni sacdatis, ostiam puram, ostiam sanctam, ostiam immaculatam, panem sanctum vitae eternae, et calicem salutis perpetuae. Superque propitio axer en avulto respicere dinieris, et accepta haberi secuti accepta haberi diniatus est. Munera pueri tui justi abel, et sacrificium patriarchi nostri abrahe, et quod tibi obtulit sumus sacerdus tuas Melchizedek, sanctum sacrificium immaculatum ostem. Supplitus terogamus omnipotens Deus, iubi heg preferi permana sancti angeli tui, in sublime altari tuum, in conspecto divini maestatis tui. Ut quod quod, ex ac altaris participatione, sacrosanctum filii tui corpus et sanguinem sum serimus, omni benedictione celesti, et gratia repliamur, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Memento etiam Domine famalorum famalorumque tuarum, qui nos preciserunt cum signo fidei, et dormiunt in somno pacis. Ipsis Domine et omnibus in Christu quiescentibus, locum refrigeri lucis et pacis, ut indulgias deprecamur, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Nobis coque peccatoribus familis tuis, de multitudine miserationum tuarum sperantibus, partem aliquam et societatem donari dinieris, cum tui sanctis apostolis et martiribus, cum Ioanne, Stefano, Mattia, Barnaba, Ignazio, Alexandro, Marcellino, Petro, Felicitati Perpetua, Agata, Lucia, Agneti, Cecilia, Anastasia et omnibus sanctis tuis. Intra corum nos consortium, non estimatur meriti, sed venie quesimus largitur admite, per Christum Dominum nostrum, per quem heg omnia Domine semper bona creas, sanctificas, vivificas, benedicis et prestas nobis. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Recepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Ateos et ies ingenis, sanctifice Quesimus Domine ab omnibus malis, 
da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tue adiuti, et peccatus simus semper liberi, et ob omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Domine Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, eam que secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare et cuadenare dinieris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum.
Ecce Agnus Dei, Ecce Catholic Peccatum, Beati qui accenum agni vocatis, Domine non sinistro, ut in tre succession et et tantum di credo, et senato per l'anima.
Oremus. Spiritum nobis Domine, tue caritatis in funde, ut quos sacramentis pascalibus satiasti, tu ha facies pietate concordes, per Christum Dominum nostrum.
Yeah.